Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Wednesday's video. Like I've said to you in previous videos, right at the beginning, guys, as annoying as it is, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really makes a difference to us. And hit the notification bell and you will be notified whenever we put out a video. Um, stay tuned for today's video, guys. Halfway through this video, we're gonna, we've got an absolute cracker um, of a thumbnail and title section. Um, but yeah, let's get out in the workshop and see what's going on. So guys, we've got an Alfa Romeo here. This is one of Paul Dove's builds. Obviously he brings the machine into us, which is very kind of him. Now, as you can see, we've got a long end mill and we are machining the block. And you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just take the studs out and do it normally? And there's a reason for that. I'm just trying to film and do this at the same time. Basically, I think it's very, very difficult to get the studs out, if, in, if not impossible, and they're probably going to snap. Um, so what Paul's done is he's fitted the liners, um, and they are pretty much flush. Oh. They're pretty much flush with the block face, um, and he needs about two to three thou protrusion of the liners. So what we're doing, we've set the block up, we've clocked it end to end on the liners so it's perfect and we are facing with a long series end mill we're facing the outside of the block down to thou and then paul's going to measure it if we need any more that we can do so um, but basically i've got to go around the studs so it's a case of winding it in out with the handles down here and making sure that we clear the studs you can see what the clearance is like there and um yeah i'm just coming up to finishing this and then paul can sort of Paul can do his measuring um, but yeah that's what I'm doing guys so at the minute hopefully we've sort of gone down a couple of thou but obviously we can't go over too far there we touch the liner and yeah obviously we've got to make sure that the end covers bolted on which it is so you're taking as much off the end cover as you are on the block and yeah hopefully this is it you see Paul is um, getting the paint off the pinto block we've, we've got the blue we've got the blue paint paul haven't we we've got the blue paint we're just trying to get um no matter how many paint jobs do you reckon this has had in its life six <laughs> i was gonna say yeah yeah quite a lot mate so he's just getting as much paint off as he can um all the machining's done and then we've got the correct blue color paul haven't we to yeah, go on this i hope so, I hope so he says Call it BDA blue, BDA blue, yeah, so BDA blue. gives you half hour in the sun though, mate. Yeah, four hours maybe, yeah. Um, right, what we've got here, guys, we've got the BMW heads off the V8. Um, so the, the bottom end is all done, uh, although we couldn't really do a lot of machining on that. Isaac's just going through the heads. So as you can see here, this head's all nicely cleaned up, painted and what have you. Um, but what we didn't realise on this uh, B44 is that you see those holes down the back there? Well, that is all connected to the EGR system. Um, and when Isaac was cleaning it out, let's see from one end, see that hole there, that goes, through, this, uh, this all sort of links up to those holes and all goes into the EGR valve system. Um, and what we noticed that when he was cleaning it out, obviously because we soda blasted it, those holes there were so carboned up, they were absolutely solid. And we've had to use this drill yeah, long series drill to get in there and actually drill that out. There was no way of poking it out. So not sure what this vehicle ran like before, whether it, um, whether it was a bit of a rough idle or what, but um, they were absolutely jam solid, as was in there, through there. We've had to drill it out, clean it several times, spend a good sort of half hour cleaning that out. So hopefully now when it all goes back together, the thing should run as it should do, sort of on emissions wise anyway. Um, so we've just got this head to do, obviously before we do any more machining, I'm just going to drill those out now, as you can see, just get this long drill in there, you see how solid that is, so now we're right the way through there, and you can see the carbon on the end of that drill, once we get a bit of focus, absolutely solid there, there's no way you'd poke that through. 
So yeah, how you would do this on the vehicle, I do not know. Whether some of these um, Forte products or something like that would, would clear that, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's amazing, amazing really how solid the carbon goes. Right guys, thumbnail and title, um, you're gonna love this one. So <laughs> I had a missed call last week, sort of Thursday I think it was. Um, Paul answered the phone, said someone had rang, got a problem with an engine that we did earlier last year. They didn't leave a number, they just said they'd ring back. Anyway, yesterday they called back um, and it was a gentleman, rang up and he was sort of a bit abrupt straight away. He, he said that he bought an engine off someone um, about three months ago and he's just got round to getting it in the vehicle, what have you, got it all running um, and the engines lasted about 30 miles and big knocking from the bottom end. So they've drained the oil, load of material coming out with the oil, load of metal. Um, so he's got hold of us saying that we did the engine, obviously it's still under warranty because um, he said the, the invoice was the 4th of April last year. Um, so I asked him to sort of produce the invoice to me and he said, oh, it's in my paperwork, you know, it's in my paperwork somewhere, I'll, I'll, I'll have to get it over to you. But he, as I say, he was very abrupt. And I said, well, obviously, to get the ball rolling, we have to go through a process. First of all, we need to know which engine it was. It was a black top Z-Tech engine, apparently, with trick cams and all the rest of it. Um, the guy was putting it in a Fiesta. And um, he's bought it off this, you know, he's bought it three months ago off this chap, privately. Um, I think by the sounds of it, he's met him. Um, because obviously I fired some questions at him. He's met him um, sort of in between his house and, and, and the guy's house and they've done the exchange. Um, he's given him the paperwork, etc., from us. So first of all, the date was the 4th of April um, and he's given the invoice, which has got the invoice number 5562. Now I've looked back on our system and invoice 5562 is for one of the uh, Long brothers. It was Chris Long and John Long. They both had Cosworths done. This is, well, These there's only six invoices for the fourth of the fourth and two of those were them. Um, now the invoice he's got, weirdly, was £4,495, including the VAT. Now Chris's engine, um, and it was under a cash. It was under a cash name with the uh, reference ZTEC. So first of all, I've put in in our system invoice five five six two, and it's come up as Chris's engine, and that's four thousand nine hundred eighty two twenty nine. Um, so first of all, there's nothing on those dates or even around those dates that goes to that amount. Um, I put in the reference ZTEC on here and that normally comes up with anything, if I put ZTEC, any jobs that we've done in the period that I put from and to um, under ZTEC, nothing's come up. Um, and also it's under a cash name, but it's distinctly on the invoice, it's distinctly looks like one of our invoices. Um, so at this stage, guys, it looks to be a bogus invoice. Um, now, the only thing I can think, I've, it's either one of two things. It's a bogus invoice. Um, obviously, I have broke the news to him that it looks like it's a bogus invoice and we never did the engine. But, of course, to him, straight away, that looks like we are getting out of doing any sort of warranty work. Um, but I can create proof. It's here on my system that there is no, no invoice for a cash on the 4th of the 4th, 22, um, under that invoice or anything around that for that amount. I haven't even got an amount of that amount on the system. Um, so one of two things has happened here, guys. Either that guy has bought a dodgy engine with an invoice that's a bogus invoice under our name, and the only reason I could think they've used our name is because we're on YouTube now. They've just sort of picked an engine builder um, that, that is in their head. Whether they've had some work done for us in the past... They must have had some work because they've got, it looks like a legitimate e, um, invoice, but it's not. Um, either that or the guy that's ringing me up is, has done it and, and he's trying to pull a fast one. I don't know, guys, but 
feel free down below to comment on this. What do you think? Um, it's a very unusual situation. I've never had anything like this before, but it does look to me, he sounds fairly genuine and he's pretty peed off. So yeah, I sort of need your advice on this one, guys. I've never really experienced anything like this before. And um, yeah, please, please help us out on what, what you recommend that I do here to obviously prove that um, you know, how, how would I go about proving that we didn't do the engine? How does the guy prove that he, he did? Um, if he's got a bogus invoice, I don't know. It's a really unusual situation. I think first, first thing I'm going to have to do is have a little chat with our solicitor and see what's going on here. Um, but yeah, very unusual, guys. Let us know down in the comments what you think. But if I hear any more, I shall be reporting back in the future videos. Right, so we've machined the outside of the block here for Paul. Um, and because the liners were sort of flush before, he wasn't 100% sure on whether they were level slightly below or what. You couldn't really get a true reading. So what we've done is we've obviously put the block on parallels here. So we know the block is sitting true on the, on the bed and clocked the face, um, what it was originally. We've clocked it from end to end. So it's absolutely as it should be. I've took um, two thou off the outside of the block or two or three thou, as good as you can measure it. Um, and what we've ended up with, or what it looks like, uh, we've ended up with about two or three thou end to end here. Obviously, because these liners are not a perfect fit, you, you can't sort of judge exactly how much you've got either side. So what you do is you take an average. So what we've got here, we've got two thou this end, two, um, three thou in the other. So two and a half thou average, same on here. But on these two, very strangely, um, we've got about four up to five thou on these. Um, so what Paul's going to do, we're going to take them all out, give the base of the block a really good clean off um, properly, just make sure there's no foreign bodies anywhere or sort of raised aluminium, seat them down properly. If we're still getting it, um, what we're going to have to do is individually just face the top of the liners um, to get the protrusion that we want because that sort of can mean, providing that the liners are all the same depth, what that can mean, is that the base of the where the liners sit the, the faces on the base we have a look down there are um are not exactly true to each other so we're gonna have to do them individually all right here we've got the pistons and rods for the rover v8 so the block is all under here you see it's all been blasted and painted and bored and what have you so that is all ready to go we've got the crank assembly back from ctm performance now as you, as you all know we can't balance the v8s at the moment so ctm did that for us and the crank is ground i do believe anyway we've balanced all the rods before we sent the crank off and now we've got them all laid out obviously i showed you before we've got the um we've modified the piston crowns so we've got the right compression ratio so all ready to go so what i've done here you see we've got three of them with the rods on the pistons. Now these are a shrink fit type. So you've got the, the small end has no bush in it and it is slightly smaller than the diameter of the pin. So what you have to do is heat to get them off. You've got to press them off, which can a lot of the time damage the piston. Um, but to put them on, you have to heat the small end and put them all together pretty quickly before it goes off. Um, so it's all a bit of a, um, a bit of a knack really doing that so we don't heat the the small end until it gets red hot and distorts you heat it so it starts to go this sort of um, sort of darker color and then you know that you've got to assemble it all you've probably got five to ten seconds um, so you've got to get it all laid out right so here you can see I've got these pistons the way they're gonna go we've got number one here two three four five six seven eight um, number five is over there which I'm going to show you how to do it in a minute and we've got all the rods and the pistons the right way now these pistons can actually go either way um, but they have got a marking on the crown a letter B so I put that to the front not that it really makes any difference and the com rods obviously go in pairs so big end one big end bearing there holds two con rods one next to the other um, and each of the rods have got thrust faces so the way to tell which way the rods go is you see that cast dimple there on the rod you haven't got it on the other side so the cast dimple obviously this is number one rod cast dimples go 
face towards each other on the rods. So we've got dimple there, dimple there, and they face towards each other. So we've got all these laid out, and we're gonna go over there and we'll show you how to put these pistons on the rods. So what we do, aluminium jaws, hold the, the com rod very lightly in the, in the vise, don't have to do it up very tight, just literally enough to hold it. And we've got the torch down there, which we're gonna heat the rod up. Uh, we have the pin in the piston, um, so it all goes on that way. But one thing you must do is make sure that that pin slides through the piston nice and freely before you assemble it. You don't want it to sort of, you don't want to get to a point where you're halfway on and it won't go through the other side. So we always make sure that, that is nice and slide fit. Stick the pin on one side and then we're going to heat that com rod up. So turn the gas on. And we're just going to heat that small end now. Not going all the way down the rod, you just want to heat the small end. I sort of go at a 45 deg degree angle. So you just to ensure that you're heating that small end consistently all over rather than just one side. Just get Isaac to hold the camera here. So you can see it's starting to go slightly discoloured. So that's about it now. So what we're going to do, turn the gas off. Over with the piston. We center the pin. And then once we center the pin, we center the, the piston on the rod underneath. If you have a look, you can see it's centered in there. And we let that go off until we get to a point where, so the pin now is fixed in that rod. And when you turn the piston, if the pin stays where it is, we've got plenty of movement either side. And that's it. Just be sure not to touch that until it's cooled right down. But you can see now, so when you move the, the, the rod to one side, the pin, you don't want the pin to stick out too much here. And same on the other side, so it's gonna score the ball. So that's perfect. Let's do the other four. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Until Friday's video, have a great evening, and um, we will see you then. Cheers.